for parcel number 23-50-54, requesting a site plan review approval for a change of use from personal service to retail store one. Um, so what we usually do is, uh, you can give us like, just a little story of what you're doing. Do you want me to come up there? You can sit right here, yeah. yeah. Hey. It's pretty informal. So just tell us what you're doing. Um, we understand that there's not really any physical changes, but we need to go through this process because it's a change of use and mm -hmm. it's downtown. Thanks. Thanks. So. Um, yes, yeah, so I would um, opening a store called Simon Says at 12 Main Street, which is the old images um, hair salon spot. And it is a general store for kids and families. So it will do resale clothing, toys, penny candy, comic books. Took a lot of suggestions from kids at Pocock Rock, so maybe we'll hear a little bit more about those kinds of things. But that's what it'll be. It'll be a retail shop with that focus. And Just anything else? Um, things like that. And, well, actually, we have a... There were questions here that we had to answer. Um, there's, so there's no change in the building, there's, um, the hours are basically the same, pretty much, right? I mean, yeah, what are your hours? What They're probably going to be 10 to 6, but they might fluctuate, right. depending on how business is, but... Okay, so pretty standard not retail really. hours. <laughs> right, right. My okay. constituency. So when we, when we, and I spoke, we extended the hours out to give it the flexibility, yeah. and yeah. not have to come back and, and tweak it. So. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah. are the hours stated? Are they more restrict restrictive than the section quoted, or are they from the section quoted? They're, the they're less. You're, you're going six a.m. to eight p.m. It'll be much less. Six a.m. Yes. Yes. As yeah. Chris said, we sort of broaden that window for the sake of this because it would stay within the bounds of doing business within Bristol, but certainly for our store. The window of being open would be much shorter my, than that. My question or my point is, why would you restrict yourself from further than what the regulations state? So I'm not clear what the regulations state. I'm sorry. I don't think she, I don't think she's restricting herself. She's just saying that's probably. I think the hours are. Well, once it's written down, she's restricting herself. So. Right. My point is, why why yeah. voluntarily do that when? Just well, this is 14, 14 hours. On the advice of the be open for 14 hours. But she has that flexibility. But in our laws for retail, we have specific times where we, we want, we don't want somebody opening up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay, and we don't want somebody closing at 11 o'clock at night. So we put this in 6 to 8 p.m., 14 hours. You probably 10 to 6, 9 to... Probably the more likely, but I would like to see, but yeah, I Kevin's think to have that. Like, you know, make, say, make why, 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 why restrict yourself, yourself um, from 10 so, so the only time that businesses typically retail stay open later than 5 on Main Street, 5 or 6, is during the holidays and the chocolate walk, and that's 8 p.m. So that was sort of when I came up with those with more, that was sort of the rationales. But I see Kevin's point too. Is most, I mean, you could adjust that to 10 p.m. if you wanted and give her the full breadth of that. Sure. Yeah, that, that seems fine to me. You have to stay open. Yeah, I would have to stay open from 6 to 10. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a very short lived business, I think. <laughs> but that seems fine. That, that revision is fine. Okay. Any other questions about any, any of the. So the regulations say that you can only be open that maximum number of hours, right? 6 to 10, 6 to those 8. Are those are between those hours. Between yeah. those hours. Yes. Those are the recommended. You, you can't make up the option to stay any longer. You can't stay open longer? You can't go at past 10 or before 6. Hmm. Why is that? Right, let's get to the you can. section. Noise. Let's you can. Noise operation. If you get a prescription you neighbor. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, delivery truck showing up at 11 o'clock. Mm. Uh, so, section 395. So, <clears throat> section 754 of the regs 
Um, they state hours of operation should be limited to the standard for similar enterprises. Hours of operation are generally encouraged not to begin earlier than 6 a.m. and end by 9 p.m. The appropriate municipal panel may extend these hours to accommodate specific types of businesses and to allow for additional shifts within the village mix of commercial districts. So, you, uh, so I would say adjust that to 9 p.m. because that's the recommended um, for the, your reg. And if you feel you, if a business owner felt they needed them longer, they could ask, and you could, you do have the power to extend that. Yeah. Where do we get the 10? I don't, I, it used to be 10. Okay. That's why I was like, I, it used to be 10. That's where I came up with 10 We my changed head. it, I guess. We did. We did this. So you might as well take the 6 to 9. Absolutely. Or maybe that just sounds fine. And then mm -hmm. probably have no reason to have to override it. I would That's imagine. Fine. Except a very lively chocolate walk, maybe, or something. <laughs> Signs are shut off at 10. But by saying you're expecting, that's not limiting her because she's going to right. conform to Section 754, which would allow her to stay open. I mean, it's, it, it's not the, that language isn't limiting her. That you thought that by her stating. Well, by her stating it in her application, that's a limitation in my, my mind, anyway. That's well, why I say it. I guess. My question. Right, yeah. I get, yeah, I guess it's, cat. it's not official, but it, if that would be something. So. so we could change it to the what's within the right. code. That's fine until 9. Okay. Anything else? And you're not going to change any any anything with the windows or any. Well, that would be for oh, the design. landlords. That's right. Okay. That, and I okay. think there there are some conversation about right. doing some things to the outside. Right. So they're revealing the there's wood on the outside top. So we're taking that wood off. Mm -hmm. But that's really for them. I don't right. know if any of you have been by this space, but mm -hmm. um, Beth and Joe Nelson, who are relatively new owners of that space, have really put a lot of effort into the inside, so I think they're taking mm -hmm. a deep breath. <laughs> and then they're going to focus on the outside, but I think mm -hmm. that they would like to do that. And we've talked about that, but mm -hmm. it would be an application for something like that would come from them. Right, and they would have Not to go through the design ritual. Exactly, yeah. yeah. What other hoops does Mara have to go through to get this approved? Not much, really. This is one of the... Um, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> She said we realized that when we did the uh, update of the zoning that we wanted to have some sort of oversight for change of use, but there's really no physical change. So it's kind of, it seems like right after we updated the zoning, we had a couple applications and they're sort of, you know, if someone's actually going to change, change the structure, that it's important, obviously. But I think it's good when to have a change of use, it's really more of a change of use, not that it falls under a site plan criteria. And we've talked about possibly rewording this right. for this process, so because it is a little, yeah, it seems a little silly. That's I don't want to fail to allow well, the, so what, what, what <laughs> really the is camera really right on me. Yeah, it's really important, good. but we're not necessarily calling it the right thing right, right so now. There, but should be, there should be an exemption if, it, if there's not any modif physical modifications to the actual site. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a change of use, change of use is a change of use. I mean, it really is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the upcoming zoning modifications, it's actually one of the like six I've got that try to come up with some wording to give some latitude so that we don't have to go through a, a site plan review for a change of use that doesn't make sense. Right. But it's important to go through a change of use. There are certain uses that are allowed and certain uses that are not allowed. But this is allowed. Right. Yeah, these, these site plan review, all those uses are allowed. Right, right. So that's where, the, that's where it gets right. sort of silly. Is So if it's, if it's a use, it's silly. And, and, you almost remove the site plan from a, a use um, of a pre-existing structure with no changes, make that a by right use. But we'll, we can discuss that later. This is actually not part of the right. Sorry, my bad. It's okay. So, um, so it's kind of a quick review. <coughs> and um, 
Sorry to bring you all out here. Huh? It's good to have a quick review on a beautiful night. Sure. Um, so, are there any other questions? Okay. Anyone like to make a motion? Well, I make a motion that we approve the application with the amended hours of being 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. allowed. And, uh... Okay. So, great. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Approved. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Do, do I need to settle up with you? Why don't you just touch base with me? I'm, I'm in tomorrow if you need more or next week sometime. Great. I'll give you a call. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks all. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. It looks like we don't have any. So we can talk more about, well, we need to close the hearing first of all. So. Uh, with the approval of uh, hearing 19501 is closed. And, um, we really don't have much on the agenda. I had Chris put you know, town plan. I was hoping to, um, at one point I was thinking of try, trying to get some kind of you know, board up the 4th of July, but I was, I'm not really sure. You're just kind of showing people what we're working on. I mean, it's still possible to pull together like one of those forest fragmentation boards to let, because I think there's a lot of people in town that are interested in this. Um, that's still something that you know I could get Andrew to do for me, um, and but I'm not really sure where to have it the Fourth of July. So um, I mean, we could. How about Simon says Dorfin? <laughs> Dorfin. There you go. Um, Actually, that's in one of the storefronts might be a good idea. Yeah. Um, so I have to figure that out, and, or we have to decide if we want to do that. And um, I mean, basically, Andrew can just could just print out, you know, the map that we were looking at, and you know, do a little write up about this is you know one of the things that we're looking at in the planning commission, and encourage people to get involved because I think it's something that's going to once. People, you know, hear about it, which they should hear about it because it's all public. But they will be interested in, in knowing what we're talking about. It's because it's a little confusing, and and it could be, you know, it's better to get the word out as much as we can ahead of time. So I don't know if that's something people have feelings about that, about doing that. I mean, we could also do it. You just have it in a storefront afterwards right. for a while. It doesn't have to be by, you know, the fourth. I don't wait until you sort of finalize your map. Because right now it's you don't have like a real final map. Right, right. And I think it would create, well, that's the thing. It, yeah. I think it could create some more confusion on the front end because yeah. that map was very right. nebulous to right. the term, so but I love the storefront idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, that does get, I mean, there's just felt like there was a time crunch, and I, and I wasn't sure, you know, what we would put out. And that way, maybe we could put some more information. Um, and it would, give, it would give the board a chance to review the information to the edge of this together to make sure it's the, the statement you all wanted to put out. Right, well. right. So maybe we could, um, at the next meeting, uh, <coughs> you know, ask him to bring some or, or get to a point of, I mean, they don't have to be, and it maybe doesn't, maybe it's not even a map, maybe it's an example of another community or it's some explanation about what what we're working on that now, people is this, see. Sorry, is this for everything that we're working on or just the well, forest fragmentation or the well, energy part or, I mean, well, I there's think a lot it's, of different right. maps, a lot of different things going right. on. Right, well, I'm thinking forest fragmentation. Okay primarily. The energy plan is pretty much done. It just needs to get adopted. It needs to, I mean, it's finished. Yeah, there's and, no um, more to do with that. Right, yeah. right. Um, I, I don't no know. No more meetings. Oh, we're done? Yeah. There's a draft. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there are other pieces of the plan. Um, so that maybe we should talk about that at the next meeting and just get and after we work on it to see what we might want to yeah. because we're going to have a public meeting and it would be better you know we're going to 
it would be better to you know have all that information out there and even we could even post on front porch forum saying that you know some maps are up in you know storefront just to get it out so, so if the energy <clears throat> section is pretty much done in draft form what does it talk about natural gas in the village center I, I don't think so there's any specific that. reference to natural gas in the building center in that. It was more about renewables. Yeah. But it doesn't prohibit. It, it doesn't say. Yeah, it, it, it just. So it's, it's, it's the tool to focus and set goals for the, the state's the renewable CL. goals, right, basically. So that could very well be exclusionary to natural gas then. Uh, I don't no. think it's exclusionary at all. It doesn't. It doesn't there's a lot to that. There's a lot to that document. So to pull out just that one piece at this point, from my memory, is yeah, so a little I think <laughs> difficult really for me. But into that issue at all. Yeah. And from my point of view, I think we should be very clear that natural gas is an opportunity for the downtown business as, a, as, a, as another fuel choice and it, in such a way that quite honestly the people that have litigated natural gas to date will not sink their teeth into the town plan and litigate based on the town plan. So it needs to be very concise that um, there is this opportunity if you will for fuel choice within the village district and if it's if it conflicts with because when the people start going with this 90 90 10 or 10 90 or 90 50 or whatever it is they're gonna anybody opposed to that which there has been a very vocal opposition will go right to that and say that natural gas doesn't fit in that plan and, and from my point of view you know, again it needs to be very clear that it needs to walk along the same path and trump if you will any any sort of fossil fuel sunset. Well, it's not that is not the basis behind that plan or developing that plan, which was it is the basis of that plan is to switch to renewables, and that was a and the plan was a it was not a required thing for our town to do no, it's not required so, so at, at the risk at the risk of shuttering or adding additional obstacles to the bringing natural gas into the village center it, it should be very closely looked right. at and maybe set aside even if it right well i don't far. think there's, there are not obstacles, because this has come up quite a bit, and there are no obstacles to non-renewable energy sources. I mean, but, it, but my point, my point is, the group that is opposed to it litigates, and they'll litigate on anything that's possible to sink their teeth in it, and and if 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 the town plan comes up with. Um, the goals, as I read them, I haven't read the final draft, but I read one in process. It, it, there's a lot of fodder there for them to litigate any sort of forward progress on natural gas. And along with the same comment was, at that point, there was no mention of natural gas being desirable to come into the village core for whatever reason. That's part of the reason there's not an award mention of that is because that whole document is the goals are to go renewable and that's the target that those mm -hmm. set for mm -hmm. it doesn't say anything and if somebody wants to litigate something they'll find a reason to anyway so chris you have yeah so uh, there's two different documents that you're talking about you're you're in hand, you're the energy plan that you all worked on is the enhanced energy plan. Right. Yes. Right. And the biggest reason for having that document and having it done is it gives the town um, a basically a seat at the table during the um, PUC hearings. Right. It, it, if you don't have that, you basically right. it's run rough shot. So right. that document handles is 
should surround your renewable goals. As far as the town plan in the energy section in the town plan, that is where I that is where if you feel that as a board it's necessary to address not just renewables but other energy sources, that's where you I would recommend that be addressed is when you get to the energy. I mean, they're, they're two right. separate documents. I agree with that. Well, it's it's like an appendix that we're working on. That's all about right. They're so not, they they are right. separate, but they do need to talk to each other. But they, they that doesn't to other. mean that because a lot of them, um, yeah, you have to look at the, how you integrate the two yeah. plans. Some towns have combined the goals and policies for instead of having them all in the town plan refer to the appendix and so so one thing is in, one piece isn't saying one thing and then the appendix is saying something else it in terms of policy and goals but I think in many of these plans um, one of the first goals is not to deny any of the citizens of whatever town basically energy to you know to heat their homes, so you know, affordable energy, and <clears throat> clearly, it, it's going to be solar energy for everybody. You know, it's it's clearly that's going to be. Used well, we talk a lot about of different that here, but That's not what happens. Well, the then we need to. This is our time to make sure so, mm -hmm. that it's clear, because it's about choices. But at the same time, the town, the select board, approved this board to apply to get the money to write that energy plan because it would give us more local control when projects come in. Um, we haven't talked about this with everybody yet. You were at those meetings, but I, I, I'm not so sure how much everybody knows about this. But the if, if your town chose, this is a volunteer, um, uh, it was a volunteer grant money. I mean, we had to apply for it, but if we wanted to do it and we could put this enhanced energy plan together and it would basically show how our town would move towards 90% um, 90, 90 renewable in 2050, not 50 in 2050. Okay. <laughs> and, and through a whole bunch of different steps. And, and it looks at all the existing use. It's quite, it's quite an elaborate plan. I mean, it's got a lot of interesting information and, and these two guys work with some people from the community. Doing, and by doing that, it allows us to have our And our then it's approved. Versus the state just saying, yeah, it's Well, approved. we can sit at the Go table. And and we have more input. We don't, right. we, we don't really have complete control because ultimately, you know. We can also I email around the draft, the current work draft. I agree. Does everyone want to see yeah, that? Right, great. and that's something okay. we actually okay. talked about. I'll do that right Andrew now. Andrew if he, yeah. nice. So, so we need to be very cautious. What I'm hearing is this is potentially a appendix working document, but we still have the top end energy section. We, and we have to make them to, to at least speak to each other a little bit, um, but it's definitely an appendix to our energy section of the town plan. And it's it's a plan. It's yeah. not a mandate. It's not, you know, and this, no one is making anybody do anything. It's goals and policies, but that is what then we base our regs on. Um, our existing zoning regs doesn't have anything about natural gas in them, as you probably know. And it, it, it's so that... But it doesn't talk about sunsetting fossil fuels either, which the enhanced energy plan does. Um, not in those words, but yeah. Effectively, it does. Well, yeah. I mean, the state law has the is, has these goals of fifty. Yeah. So that's like. I guess ninety percent still leaves ten percent. I mean, ninety percent is an awfully ambitious goal. It, it's it's on the table. What? <laughs> it, it's pretty ninety yeah. percent is going to be fairly unattainable. Well, it, it's they, it's a starting point. Yeah. Oh no. And, you know, it's a starting point to work. Yeah, there's, it's not, it's not the cure all, but I think it gets people thinking about a lot of different things, you know, and and seeing how they can do different things. But the point is not to, it's it's to encourage something, not to discourage something. But the language has to be 
it, it, yeah, it's tricky. The language has to be correct. I mean, the point of the plan is to encourage something, not to deny something. So I think that's the way that I'm looking at it. And um, I think that everybody should look at it. I mean, I, I would hope that it would be looked at that way because it gives us more of a local, local uh, voice. Yeah, it's just I think what Kevin's saying is the people that are looking to exclude natural gas are looking hard to do that. Right, than, well, not just Rather here. than not looking at it or not looking at other things. Right. Well, that's, you know, the plan has to be reviewed by all these boards. We have to yeah. review it. Yeah, well, the yeah, select board has to review it. it. Yeah. It's not going to get, we have to adopt it by town vote. The regional planning has to review it. So it's not just a, these guys finished it and it's a done deal. So it has to go through all that review process. And if it's not approved, then, then it's not approved. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. Right. So I said long <laughs> around the draft, and so then when it's, then we're gonna have this discussion. Great. Mm -hmm. What's the energy committee have? What's their, what are they involved with? With this, there just there were two other people working with um, at, um, Andrew Leroux, who we met here, who was basically facilitating. We, we got a grant to pay for Andrew to help us write this section, and it it's in the town's interest to write it according to the state standards. Then we get more say over the site well, and renewal. You and have such. to. You have to. There are certain things that need to be addressed. It's, it's reviewed by a certain a, list of standards. Some sort of yeah. Yes. Okay. Which is one of the reasons why it is such a large document compared to the yeah. plan, a plan, a town plan. You know, yeah. so, so. But you could, yeah. it, uh, what, and what all the plans for the different municipalities are working from in terms of numbers, they, um, I guess it was uh, one of the other regional planning uh, planning commissions. I think it was Northwest. They did a lot of work into you know how much, what each community or what the state would need to generate from renewable energy to meet this goal. And then they broke it down to counties. And it wasn't just numbers. They looked at the county size and population and you know the the land. You know, is it all forested? Is it mountainous? You know the the topography and then they broke it down each region broke it down into towns based on population and the type of land that they would have available to them in terms of generation and so each town started with a number uh, of kilowatts and then it, it is totally open to to kind of finish it how how each town would sort of see that number being achieved you know, is it all solar panels? Is it wind and solar? Is it is it biodigesters? Is it hydro? You know, and some of them are much more complicated than others, like hydropower, just because it's so disruptive. But some, so it's kind of an interesting process in that way. I think just that process gets people thinking, and 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 towns seeing like how much land they actually would need to do that, and then people in the towns worked, you guys worked at looking at different areas of the town where yeah, things might happen. But, but even, and so there's maps generated of what would be sites at the town. The yeah, we come up with maps that um, there's certain areas that uh, there's preferred, an incentive. Preferred areas. Preferred, and if you make do renewables in these preferred areas, solar or, or wind, then you get a, um, Oh, just get, well, no, you just, from the, the developer would get more money per yeah. per kilowatt. Yeah. So but also, yeah, and, and, it, and it's very conceptual because right. these areas are, you know, people's property. Yeah. They're all over the place. We're not, yeah. we're not like knocking on doors. I'm mean, not we, they, yeah. and saying, but because it's not going to happen unless that landowner wants to sell to someone to put renewable on this. No one's going to mandate that they just because they're a preferred area determined by. A group that they have to. It's so there's no mandate that way. So just that's what you know gets brought up a lot. You know, it's so, just like this is the area that we think would be good, um, land-wise. You know, 
it's not in a natural resource area, it's, right, there's no constraints on it, that type of transmission thing. potential. I, I've worked on one for another town, that's why I'm not, I didn't work on the Bristol one, but so that's I why I'm saying we conversation on Friday. Mm -hmm. Somebody come into my office and they're looking at trying to do a um, digester, commercial digester, um, to generate methane. Mm -hmm. uh, using everything from um, sewage um, plant, whatever it is, to and all sorts of different materials to do that. How would that be addressed? In is that was that an energy source that you yeah. that was the, 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 the bio digesters are there's very briefly touched on because they're not that. Although we like, have, them. they're not that common, really. So, and but we have one at Four Hill Farms. But right. it would count but towards the goal. one, you know. Right. That's what I'm saying. It would count towards the goal of renewable because it is a right. renewable source. But in, 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 in Bridgeport, they have quite a large one. Yeah, Blue Spruce is huge. Yeah, that's the first cow power farm. And one of the towns asked me, well, how many cows would they need to meet their energy renewable energy goals? So, so we figured out how many cows they were needing. It's like 3,000 right. cows. But this was for a small town. Much small, I mean, much less population than Bristol. But, so it's basically putting like a scenario together for each town. And, and you know, what, based on, you know, the physical characteristics of their town and the population and what they have already and, and what, but then they have, everything has to go back to the, you know, getting approved by the, their, actually not every town has to get approved by vote. Bristol is one of the few towns that has to approve mm. by town vote for the plan. I think there's only like two towns in the region. So, and there is more, there's a lot of this on the, the web, on the state website if you want to read more about it. So, I don't know if that was helpful. Okay, so you sent that around. Mm -hmm. We will talk more about it, and it's still it's not done yet. It has a ways to go. I mean, it's it's, it's a draft. It's mm -hmm. the draft is complete. Um, okay, so we're not going to try to pull anything together before the fourth. Um, so I guess. I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have anything else? What's the next meeting? What? Next meeting. Next meeting is a regular meeting. 16. 16? Yeah. Yeah. What will be the topic then? Well, we're going to continue working on the, the plan because okay. that needs to. And, um, yeah. So it'll be that continuation of forest fragmentation. Yeah, and I'm gonna. I, no, we can do. We'll work on that, and I'm. I'm going to put together a calendar because I think we really need to do that to see. Because we we do have a a deadline to get you know hopefully because at least the money runs out at a certain time for working on the plan. Um, and it would be great if we could get it to you know warned for town meeting so and we need to schedule the like, official public meeting you know for some of that work so I need to get that put together and if anybody wants to help me bill my co-chair I forgot you were my co-chair you did too didn't you <laughs> I keep forgetting that cool <laughs> You can run the next meeting, thanks. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about a schedule. I'm working on that. Okay. All right. Is a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? It was a short meeting tonight. I appreciate everyone getting here.